Morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Michelle and Chip Bazelock, we are Acts 2 community leaders here at the church. Um, by the end of this, you should have a pretty good grasp that you don't need to be perfect or anything special to lead a community group. All right. Um, I'm going to use notes. Uh, I hope you don't mind, but we're going to need that. So Brandon asked us to introduce ourselves and our community group to you. We've been involved in a community group at The Rock for several years. Uh, it has been incredibly rewarding uh, being able to share life and some pretty great food, right? Uh, and when I say it's been incredibly rewarding, let's be real. Um, the reason I'm using notes is because uh, we've discovered over the little bit that I'm having some recall issues. So God's doing something there. The only people that know about that are people in our community group, right? We do life together. We have. And it's been real challenging over the last year, especially because, you know, people are isolated and what have you. But we've still found a way to love on each other and just basically do life. We belong to, and this is where your notes align with mine. <laughs> we belong to many church groups in the past, mostly focused on scripted study and homework. And although they had a place, I'd much rather prefer actually getting to know each other, coming alongside them, and again, sharing in some great food. <laughs> right? So, well, not that the focus is on great food, but, you know. But. <laughs> We do have a, uh, we have a mission statement for our home that we've had since we've been married. And that's, this is God's house. He's going to bring whoever he wants into it. Right? It's a, it's a no judgment free zone. And we say there's no drama. We don't do drama. God doesn't do drama. We believe that everyone, regardless of who you are, what you do for a living, where you come from, it doesn't matter the country, the origin, your belief, orientation, or past, everyone craves unconditional love and acceptance. Period. And I don't know any better way, or I haven't found a way that shows Jesus more to others and to be able to love on them. Just love on them. It's really simple. You just get to love on them. And don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't. God said so. I think the only thing that complicates that is when we bring ourselves and our needs into it. I don't feel we have to sell Jesus, right? You just give that person or whoever a place safe to have disbelief and doubt and let the Holy Spirit do its work. Life's going to happen. And we just try and show them that he's involved in it. And that's where it starts. <laughs> Thanks, honey. So... Um, there was someone that I have known for several years, and um, that person, by the way, I am sharing with permission because we have a safe place, <laughs> but I am sharing with permission, and um, he was a person that had hurt, has hurt and anger, and show me any of us that don't have that, but had hurt and anger and didn't have a church background. He had a grandmother that prayed for him, though, for many, many years. And um, so this person came to this point in his life where he was like, something's got to be different. And he didn't know it, but the Holy Spirit was, was pulling him, you know, was moving him. And he didn't know how to call it that, but um, he was invited to the community group and sat there in the first day and said, I'm not a godly man, I don't believe, and, you know, told us, kind of had a bit of a wall up, let's say. And uh, so 
he just laid it out there. And the beautiful people of our community were like, right on, we can deal with that. You know, they were just just completely accepting. And, and he felt that and continued to come over and over again and wanted to come and made it a priority. And when I checked in with him, he had said, I was like, hey, how's it going? You doing all right? And everything going okay? And he's like, you know, I feel like I don't have to do life alone. I don't have to do this alone because life's hard. If, if anyone says, doesn't think life's hard, please come to me <laughs> and talk to me more because I want to hear it. Um, but life is really hard. And so when life happened, he had someone to reach out to. So we invited him over and Chip cooked for him, sat at, at Chip's table, Chip's, Chip's Island. Chip cooked for him and we just said, hey, l- let me tell you more about the love and grace of God. That, that's what we did. And, um, and he accepted Christ that night. And <laughs> it, it was really, really awesome. And um, so one of the things that we've continued to do is we meet, there's four of us that meet every other week, and we're doing something called Alpha Course. And Alpha Course is not that box. It's something different. And, um, and there's great stuff in it and great stuff coming out of it. And so there's two things that I really want you to come away with tonight, today. Oh, yeah, it's morning. Um, today, I guess it looks dark, um, is that, one, the Holy Spirit is doing the work. The Holy Spirit is teaming, teeing it up. The Holy Spirit is doing that ahead of time. And the second is that it's our job to just say yes and just be present. It's not about me knowing a whole bunch of scripture. It's not about me doing the right thing. It's about me being able to sit with them. That's it. And sometimes that's harder for us because we have a different agenda, if you will. And so um, Holy Spirit and say yes. And so that, that's where we're at. Um, and I really liked, um, you know, if, if the, something that Brandon said, if the vine produces too much stress, there's no fruit. Well, if I'm like, got to bring them to salvation, they need Jesus, and I'm, I'm working on, I'm just all in myself, right? Instead of saying, okay, what do you want from me, God? And all I have to do is say yes.